Hey there, MTS here from JobReadyProgrammer.com, where we teach thousands of students how to code and get jobs in software development. I want to talk about how to approach the overall process of software development. Newcomers in this space often get a lot of trouble trying to implement an image that they have in their mind of a, of a particular software. And the issue is they can't figure out where to even get started. There's so many different parts to this, and they want to, let's say, build a mobile app or a web app or something, and uh, they just don't know where to get started. And so I want to walk you through the process of actually thinking about building software and how to design it properly. And I'll also make sort of a real-world analogy that everyone, even people that don't have software development experience, can relate to. And that's literally the approach senior software developers use in building software as well. And that analogy I want to make is 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 that of a of a po uh, a puzzle game. You know the, the the games where you you have a bunch of puzzle pieces and you put those pieces together to form an image that's displayed on the box of that puzzle game. Well, that's literally what you're doing. Number one, you have to have an image of what you are trying to build. You draw out the user interface, draw out the components on a piece of paper and how that application should work, usability, all of that should be designed or thought about, number one, and then drawn out on a piece of paper so you know exactly where you're going. And that's that image that you're trying to get to. So on a puzzle uh, game, uh, right on the box, it shows that image. And so your job is to put those pieces together to make this these pieces uh, work to look like that image. And that's literally what you're doing with software. And so the way you go about a building software is you first, you know, speaking in terms of analogies here, you, you finish the boundaries of that puzzle, right? You put all the edges together, meaning the pieces of that puzzle that are easier to put together and that kind of create a overall boundary or edge of, of, of that puzzle game because those are the things that are easy to put together. You're basically putting the piping, right? You're piping everything together. So the front end, back end, server side, uh, whatever is required, you build that piping. If it requires services, you, 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 you write that out and you, they don't have to work. They just have to kind of be able to communicate from the front end to the back end and into the database, right? Um, and you leave everything open-ended. You're just putting the outline of that software, right? Once you get those edges completed, um, you now know that, okay, Every, all these other pieces of this puzzle are going to go inside of here, and I don't have to worry about anything else outside. All right? I've covered the edge cases. Now that you've created that, now you look at the image and you think, okay, there's a bunch of trees here. So let me find all the puzzle pieces that have trees on them. And so now you've just narrowed the problem down further. You're basically using um, divide and conquer as your primary strategy uh, to build software. This is literally how it's done. You divide the big problem into many, many small problems. And you can divide them all the way down to the actual piece, and eventually that's what you have to do. You go to this piece and you figure out, okay, where does this belong? Well, this is a tree, and I see in this image that the trees belong somewhere in this area. So you start putting all of those pieces together that form trees, and now you have sort of a forest, let's say, if that's part of the image. And then you have another part of that image that shows that there's a bunch of boats there, so now you start collecting all the pieces that have boats on them, and you put those together. And then let's say that there are some mountains or whatever, so you um, you collect all the pieces that look like mountains. So you're basically creating these different software components in a software, and all the pieces that belong in that given uh, component should basically go together. Now they have to communicate with one another. You already have the outline of the application, or that pipeline, rather. And so the edge cases are covered, uh, and you provide maybe an API to access the components inside. So it's really uh, sort of like, microservices. Microservices is the idea that you create these um, independent software modules that kind of work either together or provide an external API to, you know, to work with. And so they can all be encapsulated. The logic can be encapsulated in this service, this bunch of trees, and this bunch of boats are going to need to basically be connected one way or another. And so uh, that's literally how you construct software. It's, it's really a uh, a simple process. It's not as complicated as most people think, but because software development is a, a, a somewhat of an intensive field, people get confused when they're first getting started. But I'm telling you, that's literally how you think about building software. And so um, here's an article that I came across on SD Times where it gives sort of a, an idea of what microservices are meant to be. And really, 
Uh, these are individual software components or software modules rather that you can either have communicate with one another. Uh, some of them could have their own database, right? And these are basically independent applications deployed on their servers, independent applications de de uh, deployed on their servers. And they're meant to be communicated in, in a certain way with one another. Uh, you can choose to provide access to the uh, to them from an outside um, client, but typically uh, that is blocked by an API gateway, right? So this could be your services uh, connected to your database and you have an API gateway. So all the clients that need to um, access the components of your application, they have to go through this API gateway. And then eventually this, uh, this talks about JWT tokens and you could read through this, but you know, even the um, security is sent through the API gateway, the user logs in, um, and a J JWT token is retrieved from the authentication server. And now every request that that user sends to this API gateway, basically all of these services are expecting a, a, a certification or rather uh, authentication token, a JWT token that's sent with that request uh, like this. So this user requests uh, not only the service, but also with the JWT token and uh, the service then is responsible for uh, trying to make sure that that uh, user, in fact, does have, um, uh, is in fact authorized by making a call to the authentication server if it's needed. But this is all behind this API gateway. Uh, but this is the whole idea. You build these different software modules and they may need to communicate with one another or they may not, but they are pretty much individual um, thought pieces, so to speak, uh, softwares. Um, and you basically provide a way to access them in a cohesive manner. Um, and that's literally how you want to think about building software. I don't know if I went too complex into the technicals, but if you want to learn more about software development, of course, I've got a whole curriculum on jobreadyprogrammer.com where we teach thousands of students how to code and get jobs. Um, let me show you on my, on my website what I'm talking about here. By the way, we're having a promotional uh, sale, uh, which is ending soon. Summer is almost over. So... 60% uh, discount, make sure to use this. Uh, some people are actually paying the full price uh, down here. You don't have to pay the full price. Uh, you can just use the coupon code while it's uh, active, but this gives you access to the software's, uh, software development principles. And um, you know we, we have courses on design patterns. We have courses on coding puzzles and so on. And then of course, building a front end, back end, full, um, full stack application here on the software developer path. And then of course, I recommend people that are new to start with data because data is key. Every company's biggest asset is to start with data, learn SQL, and then graduate over to the rest of the curriculum. But this is the site, make sure to check it out. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in another video. Thank you.